All right, everybody. This is our last video, a little mini lecture video for our class for the semester. We're in the back part here of module number eight. We are talking about the feeding and eating disorders, and we've already talked about anorexia nervosa, which is kind of the cornerstone uh, eating disorder, really. Again, if you're going to understand eating disorders, I think it starts with, to me, with anorexia. Uh, to me, that is the more complicated of the three that we're going to talk about. But we want to talk about bulimia nervosa, kind of its cousin. And then we want to talk about really kind of a new diagnosis. It's not a new disorder or a struggle, but it's, but it's new to the DSM-5. And it's similar to bulimia. It's called binge eating disorder. So let's talk again, just as a reminder, eating disorders are complicated, complex mental health conditions that really are not about eating. They are most often connected to deeper kinds of issues of control, perfectionism, uh, power, um, uh, uh, issues of low self-esteem and low self-image and sometimes trauma and all kinds of issues. Uh, performance, all kinds of stuff can come into play when it comes to the eating disorders. And so bulimia nervosa is the second one. Now bulimia, uh, whereas, the, whereas anorexia, the word anorexia means without appetite, um, the word bulimia means always hungry. Literally in its original language, the word bulimia means always hungry. And so kind of, again, the idea was in the early days uh, when, we, when, when researchers were developing kind of the names and studying these two different eating disorders, uh, they kind of saw bulimia as the disorder where people are always hungry, so they're always eating. And that's not necessarily totally accurate, but it is, it's somewhat close. So it's kind of a way to kind of see the difference between the two. Anorexia is where someone has this low body weight and this fear of gaining weight, this like phobia, and, and then also to this misperception of themselves, much more complicated. Bulimia is a little bit more straightforward. Sometimes it's called the purging, uh, the binging and purging disorder sometimes. And so let's talk about uh, bulimia nervosa. It has three, like, like anorexia, has three core symptoms. And again, like with anorexia, all three of these symptoms kind of go together. So number one, uh, bulimia is uh, characterized by persistent, consistent patterns of binge eating. Now, we see some of that in anorexia. This is where it gets kind of complicated because there's often an overlap between these two disorders, anorexia and bulimia. Um, but with anorexia, that's not really the primary feature, the binge eating with bulimia, it is. And so kind of one of the ways I keep them and tell them apart is, is you know, if you have a, a, a situation with a client or a person that really where binge eating is kind of the main struggle, it probably is more bulimia or binge eating disorder than it is anorexia, potentially, potentially. Um, and so binge eating, binge eating has two characteristics. It is uh, a it is eating more than you would expect than is typical or appropriate in a set period of time. So, again, the idea with binge eating is kind of like binge drinking. You know, binge drinking is where in a short period of time, you drink a large number of drinks. We don't call it binge eat, binge drinking if someone drinks consistently all day or for three or, three or four days. That's not binge drinking. Well, binge eating is a term that refers to a specific set of time, usually less than two hours, where in that period, someone excessively eats. They eat more uh, food than they intended to eat or that would be typical or appropriate in most situations. They overeat in a specific period of time. That's the first characteristic. Second characteristic of binge eating is the person feels or exercises this in a lack of self-control. Uh, so therefore they ate more than they intended to. Um, once they got started, they didn't, they could not stop. There's like, like this lack of self-control, even though I've been eating now for over an hour and I'm totally full and I've eaten everything, I go to the store and get more because I just need to eat more. I'm not really hungry. I just want more. And so this lack of control, so sort of like an overeating, excessively overeating in a short period of time is the first characteristic of binge eating. And the second thing we would look for would be uh, sort of a lack of a lack of self-control, sort of an out-of-control eating kind of a pattern, right? So that's, that's what's called binge eating. So again, binge eating can look in a lot of different ways, but it is characteristic. It's the, it's the cornerstone of bulimia. Now, other ideas with binge eating is this. So um, binge eating is one of those things that many people are ashamed of. We'll talk more about that with binge eating disorder. So a, a fairly typical characteristic of a binge eating episode is someone does it in secret, not always, but oftentimes in secret. People will oftentimes binge eat food that normally they are what will be called forbidden food. 
uh, food that they've been trying to stay away from. Maybe they've been dieting and they've been staying away from something. And so they haven't eaten it in several days or several weeks or several months. And then they get stressed and then they just go, they hoard it and they, and they eat whatever it is. So binge eating often is built around what we call forbidden food. Uh, sometimes, um, binge eating oftentimes is triggered and, uh, and not always, but often. And so people get bored, people get lonely, people are going through a period of depression, people are afraid or they're fearful. They have a fight with their girlfriend or their boyfriend. Um, you know, a, a former client of mine who was a single mom, she was divorced and, and uh, her kids would go every other weekend to visit their dad. She shared custody with her ex-husband. And uh, she said, you know, when my kids were around, you know, we were always busy and whatever. She said every other weekend they would leave on Saturday morning. I'd be by myself in my apartment. And she said, I had nowhere to go. I had no money. And she said, I just started, and she said, for me, that was like a trigger for my overeating. And so she said, because I was by myself, I felt ashamed. I felt bad. You know, they were going to go and have fun with their dad. And what am I doing? I'm not doing it right. And so, so sometimes binge eating can be triggered, you know, by certain situations so that those are common dynamics that we see in binge eating. So binge eating is kind of patterns of persistent, consistent patterns of out of control, overeating, binge eating is sort of the cornerstone of bulimia. The second important piece with bulimia is this. It's what the, it's what the DSM calls um, re uh, recurrent inappropriate compensatory behavior. The word compensatory is a good DSM-5 psychology word, right? The word compensatory just means compensate. And so what, what it is, is basically in addition to, so as a result of binge eating, so again, these symptoms go together. As a result of binge eating, I feel now guilty and ashamed. And so with bulimia, what you then have is then there is a pattern to where someone engages in a behavior or behaviors to undo the eating, to undo feeling full, to undo and soothe my feelings of shame and guilt or whatever it may be, compensatory, uh, to compensate compensatory behavior. Now, that can look a lot of different ways. Uh, people can make themselves throw up and vomit or purge. So we call binge and purge or so that, that they can make themselves throw up. They may engage in excessive exercise. Uh, they may abuse laxatives to make themselves go to the bathroom and get out, get whatever they've eaten out of their body in their mind, at least. Right? They may then starve themselves. So you see this binging, starving, binging, starving, and so uh, excessive fasting is a fancy way to say starving myself. And then you see because I starve myself now, I'm starving, hungry. Well, now then I then I go and I binge. And then I, so this binging, starving is, is actually, you know, we don't think about starving myself or excessive fasting as a compensatory behavior, but it can be if it is directly connected to, well, the reason why I didn't eat for two days is because of what happened on Saturday morning. Well, what happened on Saturday morning? Well, I had a long week. And so I got up on Saturday morning, my kids went away. And so I had a period of, you know, whatever I binged and over ate. And then as a result, I felt so bad. I decided, okay, I'm not going to eat now for two days. So I starved myself for two days. And then what you get is that snowball nasty cycle where I, I, I binge and I starve. Well, then I, then I binge and I starve, right? And so you get these patterns of this behavior, you know, the binging, binge eating, and then this compensatory behaviors. So, so bulimia is characterized by, by, by the relationship between those two things. Binge eating behavior followed by compensatory behaviors, right? And oftentimes those compensatory behaviors involve me, you know, kind of soothing myself and getting the, getting the food out of myself, throwing up, making myself vomit, whatever it may be to get rid of the food as a way for me to kind of control, you know, this idea that I want to undo what I've done. I want to undo this overeating that I've engaged in because I feel so embarrassed. No, I should. And so this, this idea of, of, this, of this binging and purging, binging and purging sort of cycle. So I talk about that in your lecture notes. That, that is kind of characteristic of bulimia. Now, real quickly, before we have the third symptom, we sometimes see some of that pattern, as I've now mentioned two or three times, we can and do see some of that binging, purging in anorexia. And it's complicated. Usually one of the things we look for with anorexia is, again, the refusal to eat. Um, and, and the lack and loss of weight and the misperception of body image and the, and the intense fear of gaining weight and being fat. That's really a characteristic of anorexia. We can sometimes though see binging and purging within anorexia. We can't see that. But really that's more characteristic of bulimia. And so with bulimia, what we would see is we would not see the excessive uh, lack or loss of weight. Uh, we also see, don't, don't we also too don't see the intense fear, like the, like, like the phobic fear that we see in anorexia of getting overweight or being overweight. 
Uh, many people with bulimia don't perceive themselves as being overweight. They, they accurately perceive themselves as far as their body image and weight. Um, so you don't have the misperception that we see with anorexia. So two key symptoms, first two key symptoms with bulimia are the binging, periods of binge eating, and then these recurrent inappropriate uh, compensatory behaviors connected, directly connected to the binge eating episodes. And then here's the third, here's the third symptom. And it's very similar. It's kind of similar to what we saw with anorexia. It's just this, uh, the DSM calls it, um, self-evaluation is unduly influenced by body shape and weight. So this is what it means. This is the way I look at it. People with bulimia, in addition to binging and purging, uh, they have excessive negative views of themselves. Um, excessive negative low self-esteem. Now, many people struggle with low self-esteem, uh, but one of the characteristics of both anorexia and bulimia is this idea that people just do not love themselves. They, they, they excessively negatively evaluate themselves, with bulimia especially, their, their self-image is directly connected to uh, how they look and their, their idea of their weight and their idea of, of being, of where they are in their way. So that, so it's not like they misperceive their body image and their weight. They just hate it. And it doesn't matter how they look. Um, you know, with anorexia, even if someone is of average weight or underweight, they think they're fat. That's anorexia. With bulimia, a person may be of, of any weight, average weight or overweight, and it doesn't matter where they are. They just hate themselves. And so this kind of this self-hatred, sort of this excessive negative, um, it's kind of it's kind of like beyond low self-esteem, but just this excessive preoccupation and excessively evaluating myself and, and defining myself based on my weight and my body image and my body shape is the, is more the cognitive emotional kind of kind of a symptom of, of 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 bulimia. So that 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 more emotional aspect comes into play as well too. So you have the binging, you have the compensatory behaviors, you have the negative self evaluation. Those are the three core symptoms of bulimia. Again, bulimia is often complicated by other mental health conditions. Bulimia is often complicated by other kinds of medical problems and issues. But again, they're very similar to uh, anorexia, but a little bit different, a little bit more straightforward, a little bit more focused on binging and purging. So that's bulimia nervosa. And then let's talk about this very last one. The very last thing we want to talk about in this, in this class, the very last mental health condition I want you to be familiar with is actually new to the DSM-5. And it is called binge eating disorder. Speaking of binge eating, there's binge eating disorder. So for many, many years, uh, people who worked in eating disorders and doctors and physicians and clinical social workers and therapists uh, had this experience. A man or a woman comes in and it appears that they have a problem with binge eating. So it kind of looks like bulimia, maybe. And then you would ask questions about, do they engage in compensatory behaviors? And there they wouldn't. They just would binge eat all the time. And they'd have patterns of binge eating without the compensatory behaviors, without, without, the, without the behaviors in, intended to soothe or undo my eating. Well, that's not only bulimia. And so for a year, but a lot of people struggle like that. So you've heard of what's called food or eating addiction. And, uh, and we talked a little bit about that with substance use disorders, a process addiction. So we know people can have what's called a food addiction. And so in some ways, this is not exactly true, but in some ways, binge eating disorder is kind of really in the area of more like a food addiction. And what it is, is it starts with binge eating. So we, we use the same definition with, for binge eating that we did in bulimia. A period of time, we're in, a, we're in a discrete period of time, usually less than two hours, someone overeats and there is a lack of self-control. And so they exercise little self-control and they overeat. They eat, they, they eat more than we would expect them to eat or they would intend to eat. They ate more than they plan to when they start. So this lack of self-control. So you have the binge eating. and but, but what you don't have is you don't have the compensatory behaviors. What you have instead is just the low negative evaluation of myself, the low self-esteem, uh, the issues of just feeling, feeling bad about myself because I overeat. Sometimes people, sometimes people call binge eating disorder um, the overeating disorder, someone who has a problem with overeating or has an addiction like to food, and they just and, and they and they just binge eat a, a lot when they're stressed or whatever it may be, uh, and, and patterns of that, patterns of binge eating, and then kind of related to that, the DSM gives us several examples. I think it says there have to be has to be three of these other things. So, for example, um, while binge eating, eating quickly, eating so fast that I might I, I have to kind of slow myself down. I'm not chewing my food. I'm swallowing it so fast. I may even choke a little bit if, if that's a part of the binge eating. That's one of the things we see with binge eating disorder. Um, secondly, kind of like we talked about before with bulimia a little bit, um, as a part of the binge eating, um, a person reports that even when they didn't feel hungry, they kept eating. And even though I was full, 
Um, I, I just kept eating even though I was already full. Totally uncomfortable, sick to my stomach, full, but I just could not stop. That would be another one we would see. Um, binge eating kind of out of habit or to kind of soothe myself or to punish myself. I'm not really hungry, but I don't have anything else to do. So I just eat. I binge eat. Right. And especially to kind of soothe myself, like my former client, you know, my kids are gone. I'm lonely. I feel ashamed. They're out having fun. My ex-husband's got a new girlfriend. I don't have anybody. So food to soothe. Right. And and that's true for lots of people. I mean, it doesn't mean someone has an eating disorder if they do that. But with binge eating disorder, kind of one of the characteristics we would see is binge eating and then kind of, you know, binge eating even when I'm not hungry. I just don't know what else to do. I'm just kind of bored. I'm kind of alone. I got nothing to do, so I'll just eat whatever I've got in the kitchen. That 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 that, that kind of pattern we see that uh, patterns of eating alone due to shame or guilt. I don't want you to see what I'm eating. I'm embarrassed about you. I'm embarrassed about my eating. So patterns of being embarrassed about my eating would be another feature that we would see along with the binge eating with binge eating disorder. Um, just a sense of disgust, uh, being disgusted with myself, being depressed feeling excessively guilty about what I, about my eating behavior. Um, and then just this idea that, that my binge eating, my, my, my binge eating uh, has, cre- has begun to create uh, some level of disruption in my relationships at work or school or financially, maybe um, it creates distress for me. I'm worried about it maybe. And if I'm not worried about it, maybe someone else in my life is not worried. So it creates distress. It creates distress or disruption and so several, five or six are those little sort of uh, side kind of symptoms, so to speak, that we would look for in addition to the binge eating. So again, with binge eating disorder, we don't see the compensatory behaviors to undo the eating. What we see is just a lot of guilt. And we see what we see, a lot of a lack of self-control and a lot of depression and um, a lot of sort of sort of an out of control pattern of eating without the compensatory behaviors. And so that's kind of what binge eating disorder is. So again, if we were in the classroom today, uh, what I would have done when I started this conversation on eating disorders, I would have gone up to the front of the room and on the front of the on the board in the front of the room, I would have drawn three big circles, overlapping circles, anorexia, bulimia, binge eating disorder. And all and, and, the, and this idea that all of them have a have similar features they are all about eating, but there's overlap between the three of them. They're, they're distinct from one another, but there, as is the case with many mental health conditions, uh, there's a lot of overlap between them. So these are the eating disorders, bulimia nervosa, anorexia nervosa, and binge eating disorder. As always, make sure you go look at the PowerPoint presentation I, pro- I provided for you. Make sure you look at your lecture notes, all the little videos I posted for you. I found some videos for you, as always, to look at on in the module. Uh, do your homework assignment and get ready to do your last quiz, module eight quiz. As I said at the beginning of this video, this is our last time. Hope that you have enjoyed this class. I hope that you will come and join me on campus at the Montgomery campus or online for any future classes that you need. I would love to have you. It would be my honor to have you again as a student in any of my classes. And I hope to see you again soon.